Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, in the last class, we had seen uh, how to get the expression for non-dimensional thrust for a turbojet when we had the condition that the flow is optimally expanded through the nozzle. Uh, optimally expanded through the nozzle is a condition that is most times not satisfied. The other condition that is the flow is choked as it leaves the nozzle is, is the most probable one in case of turbojets. Okay. Turbojets as I had said in the previous classes uh, other than uh, what was used on uh, Concorde all other turbojet engines are primarily conversion nozzle. They do not use a conversion diversion nozzle. This is because uh, the exit pressure after the turbine is very low. So, you do not have a scope for using a conversion diversion nozzle. Okay. So, let us look at the case where the flow is choked flow at the exit of the convergent nozzle what does this mean if the exit of the convergent nozzle the flow is choked what does it imply to our thrust equation if you remember our thrust equation was f is equal to m dot a into <coughs> right this is our thrust equation if the flow at the exit of the nozzle is choked then what it means is this part is not going to zero in all the previous uh, expressions that we had derived we had assumed that the at the exit of the nozzle the exit pressure is equal to the ambient pressure that is the condition for optimally expanded flow. Now, we are saying that the flow is only choked and P 7 need not be equal to P naught. So, here P 7 is not equal to P naught. So, therefore, it will produce a pressure thrust also. Typically, <coughs> pressure thrust is around twenty to twenty five percent of the overall thrust. So, this is not a small portion. So, in this class, let us look at how to do this analysis when we have this condition. Uh, before we go there uh, what do you mean by flow in the nozzle is choked when do we say that when do we say that the flow through the nozzle is choked. P 7 is greater than P 9 huh? when P 7 is greater than P 7 is equal to 1.2, P 0 is equal to 1. So, is this condition choked? And then what do we mean when we say that the flow is choked, flow through the nozzle is choked? Yes. <coughs> so, if you have a nozzle, a conversion nozzle, at the exit of it, if the Mach number is 1 then we say the flow is choked. The reason for that is 
the reason why we say the flow is choked is what happens when you have Mach number 1 here, whatever happens in this side, okay, you cannot transmit any disturbance or any information upstream, because the flow has already reached the speed of sound, disturbances propagate upstream at the speed of sound. right? So, if the flow has already reached speed of sound at the exit, they can no longer, uh, the flow cannot feel anything in the downstream conditions. So, if m is equal to 1 is reached, then the flow becomes independent of downstream conditions and is only a function of upstream conditions. right? So, which is why uh, some people when they plot uh, the mass flow rate with back pressure, they say it reaches a maximum. That is a little confusing, you just need to say that it becomes independent of the back pressure. Okay. Typically, if you take any nozzle when the flow is not choked, uh, the mass flow rate is determined by both the pressures. Only upon <coughs> the nozzle being choked, then it becomes uh, independent of the downstream condition and becomes only a function of the upstream condition. Okay. So, now let us look at uh, the case on our hand, wherein we have to do the analysis for the flow when the conversion nozzle is choked, and this is our thrust equation, and we cannot neglect the pressure thrust part. Okay. So, we can again use our, uh, we can say that F is still very much less than 1 because uh, most times the main gas turbine engine operates with somewhere around 0 0.02 or 0 0.04. Okay. So, fuel air ratio of 0 0.02 or 0 0.04. So, F is very much less than 1. So, this goes to 0. So, we can rewrite our expression as F is equal to m dot a into V naught into V 7 by V naught minus 1 plus I will take out uh, P naught here. So, I will get P naught A 7 okay. Now, the this portion we can simplify as we had done earlier, but in addition we have another component here. So, what is it that we do? V naught is equal to A naught M naught, right. So, if you put that and M naught is F is equal to M dot A A naught M naught and V 7 by V naught, I can express it as A 7. Now, using our familiar stuff that is uh, we know that we assume that gamma and r do not change across the gas turbine engine. So, you get uh, a 7 by a naught as an expression in terms of temperatures. So, let us do that. I can rewrite this as f by m dot a a naught is equal to m naught into under root T 7 by T naught into m 7 by m naught minus 1 plus P naught A 7 divided by 
m dot a a naught okay now what do we do further we what do is the condition that we know we know that m7 is equal to 1 okay at the exit of the nozzle the flow is choked that is Mach number is 1 okay so we can substitute that here and rewrite our expression as So, m 7 goes to 1 here, I can bring in this m naught, so I will get only under root t 7 by t naught minus this will become m naught. Okay. So, this is the expression that we have. Now, we need to find ratio of t 7 by t naught and also p 7 by p naught. In the earlier case, p 7 by p naught we used to take it as equal to 1 and find using that find the ratio of Mach numbers. Now, that is not equal to 1, so you need to find two ratios, ratios of temperatures and pressures. Now, coming to T 7 by T naught, uh, we have done this exercise earlier. Now, that just that the nozzle exit is choked, do you think this ratio is going to change? So, we need to do a fresh derivation of this ratio or do you think it is going to change? What is the conditions? It's going to change. Let's see how it's going to change. Okay. Uh, see T seven by T T seven into T T seven by T T six into T T six by T T five. T T five by T T four Now, what is this? This is the only place probably it can change. All the rest of the terms are similar to the previous conditions, right? Only thing that will change is probably here, right? So, here we know this is the ratio of we can express this is a ratio of static to stagnation. So, we can express it in terms of Mach number. m 7 square, then this is 1, this is again 1 after burner, first one is nozzle, this is after burner, this is tau t flow through turbine, then uh, tau b flow through combustor or burner, then tau c flow through compressor and this is flow through uh, intake which is again 1 and this is theta naught. Okay. Now, here we know that m 7 must be equal to 1. So, we can get an expression for T 7 by T naught as tau T
okay. Now we also know what is tau b, if you look into your notes, the previous class we had derived this. What is tau b? Theta b by tau c, theta naught. Okay, and uh, if you plug that in, you will get T7 by T naught is equal to tau t. Instead of tau b, I have theta b by tau c theta naught into tau c theta naught okay so this cancels off and i'm left with theta b okay so, this is the expression for T 7 by uh, T naught for the condition when the nozzle is choked. Now, what happens to the compressor turbine power balance? Does it change because of this or whatever we had derived remains the same? See, what is happening is something downstream of the turbine, right. So, whatever we had derived is upstream of this. So, this should not change. So, what we had derived for the comp uh, compressor turbine power balance does not change. So, we had derived that uh, from compressor turbine power balance we had derived that tau t must be equal to 1 minus theta naught by theta b into tau c minus 1, this remains the same. Okay. Now, we have to find an expression for tau t here. So, let us do that. I can rewrite this as tau t is equal to theta b minus And using this expression into this equation, I will get T7 by T0 is equal to 2 into theta b So, this and this cancels off. I am finally left with 2 into theta b minus tau c theta naught. Okay. So, 
we have been able to get the temperature ratio here that we were looking for, right. Now, what are the other things that we need to derive here? We have got this part temperature ratio done, we still have to find the pressure ratio and we have to derive an expression for this quantity here, okay. So, let us do that now. So, again cascading pressures we are looking for an expression for P 7 by P naught, we can write it as P 7 by P T 7 into P T 7 by P T 6. P T 6 by P T 5, ok. Now, when we do this, in the previous case we had assumed this, I mean we had assumed the flow to be optimally expanded, so this became 1, ok. Now, it is a, it is not equal to 1, so we will get the first term is ratio of static to stagnation conditions. So, I can express it in terms of Mach numbers. The next one indicates flow through nozzle, uh, we have assumed all efficiencies, we are doing this analysis assuming all efficiencies to be 1. So, this is 1, again the next is flow through uh, the after burner, we have not switched it on, so this is again 1 and uh, what is P T 5 by P T 4, this is flow through turbine. So, this is this is pressure ratio, so this is pi t into p t 4 by p t 3 is flow through combustor, uh, combustor the pressure is the same because we are assuming an ideal cycle here. So, this is 1 and this is flow through compressor, so this is pi c and this ratio is for flow through diffuser or intake, uh, this is 1 because we are assuming efficiencies to be unity and the last term is theta naught to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1, ok. So, I can write P 7 by P naught is equal to this is 1, so I will get 2 by gamma plus 1. into tau t to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1 into tau c to the power of gamma by ok. And we do know that tau t and tau c are related through compressor turbine power balance and if we were to take that into account, we can show that the ratio P 7 by P naught would be
taking into account compressor turbine power balance we saw that the compressor turbine power balance was unaffected and uh, we could get this expression for tau t now using this in that expression there we can get I have only substituted for tau t there, tau c theta naught divided by gamma minus 1. So, this is the expression that we have. Now, we have been able to get expression for two quantities. The last quantity that we need an expression for is, we need an expression for So, uh, how do we go about doing this? How do we get this expression? Any ideas? We just like uh, to get an expression for F, you said we said uh, compressor turbine power balance, and then to get an expression for tau t in terms of tau c. Uh, sorry in the last case uh, energy balance across the combustor what was what we used to get an expression for f uh, to get an expression for tau t we said uh, compressor turbine power balance and we got the expression similarly is there something that we can do here to get this expression Yeah. Uh, what we need to do is we need to look at a mass flow rate through the nozzle we will see how we can use that to get this expression. Now, uh, mass flow rate through the nozzle, what is the expression that we know? We know that m dot a into 1 plus f that is mass of air plus mass of fuel burnt, this must be equal to rho 7 v 7 into a 7, right. Now, again we can make this approximation that f is very much less than 1. So, therefore, this goes to 0. So, I get m dot a is equal to rho 7 v 7 a 7. Okay. Now, what is rho 7 in terms of pressure? m dot a is equal to using the equation of state I can write p 7 by r T 7 for rho 7 into V 7 I can rewrite it as what into Mach number into so 
a 7 right. So, into a 7. So, I get what we are looking for is p naught into a 7 by m dot a a naught. Okay. So, what do we need to do here? This we know is this quantity is what is this? Because this is flow is So, m 7 is equal to 1. So, I am left with what is a 7? a 7 is nothing but gamma r t 7. Okay. So, if I substitute for a 7 here and rewrite m dot a, I will get p 7 under root gamma divided by this would not be there r t 7 into a 7. Okay. Now, what do I need to do? I need to multiply by, if I multiply by a naught on both sides, I get one part that is m dot a a naught. Okay. So, let us do that. I get m dot a a naught is equal to again a naught is nothing but right. So, I will use that on the right hand side. So, I get p 7 into gamma under root r t naught ok. So, r and r cancels off here. So, I am left with p 7 a 7 into gamma into Okay. Fine. Now, what do we need to do again? So, if I uh, I want m dot a by a naught by p 7 uh, p naught by a 7 right. So, I can do this I can write this as m dot a a naught divided by p naught a 7 must be equal to p 7 by p naught into gamma into under root t 7 by t naught by t 7. Okay. So, we have been able to reduce m dot a a naught into two known quantities. right? We already know the expression for p naught by p 7 by p naught and we also know expression for t 7 by t naught. So, we have been able to reduce it to this form. Now, let us go back and substitute it and see what we can get.
if you remember our expression for our expression for f by m dot a a naught we had got was under root T 7 by T naught minus m naught this part was taken care of and sorry T naught a 7 by m dot a a naught into what was the P 7 by P naught minus 1. So, we have got expression for this as well as this. So, when we substitute we get this part remains as is T 7 by T naught minus M naught plus P 7 by uh, P 7 uh, P naught A 7 by M dot A A naught is 1 by gamma into Now we can uh, simplify here and rewrite this expression as Now we know expression for T naught T 7 by T naught and we also know expression for P 7 by P naught. So, we will substitute that and see what is the final form that we can get at. into 1 minus is a fairly big expression This is the 
uh, final expression that we get. Now, if we were to substitute here uh, what we did earlier, that is, does this produce static thrust or not? So, let us do that for static thrust m naught is equal to 0 and theta naught is equal to 1. So, if you substitute that, you will get Uh, this is the expression that one can get and further simplification is possible on this. I will leave it as an exercise to you. Okay. You can take out uh, gamma plus 1 and further simplify it. This part also you can take out. Okay. So, we have been able to derive this expression for non-dimensional thrust. Now, this is a fairly complicated expression compared to uh, that we derived for uh, optimally expanded flow through the nozzle and much more complicated than the expression for ramjet. Okay. Now, the next part that we need to address is what ISP. Okay. So, ISP part uh, what we will do is uh, The ISP, uh, we know the expression for ISP by A naught as right, and we have spent a considerable amount of effort trying to derive this expression. We already got this expression. Now, what we need is 1 by f. Now, in the previous case, when the flow was optimally expanded through the nozzle, we had derived this expression for 1 by f. Now, what we need to look at is what is the difference between the expression that we derived there and will there be a difference here. Now, again, if you look at the flow process, what is happening in the nozzle is much more downstream than what is happening through the combustor. So, the expression for 1 by f that we had derived earlier is the same. So, I can use 1 by f that we had derived earlier as q by C p t naught into okay. this expression remains the same. So, I know that 1 by f is known, f by m dot a is known. So, if you substitute 
this expression there uh, sorry this expression you will get ISP okay fine. Now having uh, derived these expressions let us look at what is it that we can understand from these expressions. Remember we did the same exercise we found out uh, what is the Mach number at which the non dimensional thrust would be a maxima depending on uh, what values of theta b and other things for the ramjet. Let us do the uh, similar exercise for turbojet. Okay. Now in a turbojet we will again uh, look at the condition where the flow through the nozzle is optimally expanded uh, simply because it is something that is easier to do in the classroom. Uh, doing something on this is a little more complicated. So, I will uh, look at uh, what uh, we can find out using the expression that we derived for optimally expanded flow. Okay. So, if you look at the expression for optimally expanded flow through nozzle f by a m dot a a naught was m naught into theta b minus tau c theta naught plus theta naught minus okay fine this was the expression that we had if you see here as theta b increases what should happen see as theta b increases what should happen to f by m dot a a naught this also increases because you can pull out the theta b terms and you see that you get 1 minus 1 by tau c theta naught. So, as theta b increases it is fairly obvious from this expression that as a consequence f by m dot a a naught also increases right which means what that if you have a large enough theta b then the size of the engine is going to be smaller and smaller for the same thrust okay fine or if you keep the dimension same right then your thrust is going to increase if you increase theta b okay this is preferred because you will have lesser drag on the engine okay okay then this is fairly clear then what what we need to look at is what happens to what is there an optimal value for the compression ratio. If I fix theta b and theta naught is there an optimal value for compression ratio. Okay. If I am flying at a cruise Mach number let us say if I am flying at a cruise Mach number then my theta naught gets fixed. Remember when in this previous class one of the previous class we had derived an expression wherein we looked at uh, uh, what is the range and how the overall efficiency gets affected by it right. In that uh, we had said most of the flight takes place in the cruise range right. So, if you substitute theta naught for cruise and you know the theta b value then you can find an optimal expression for tau c let us do that in the next few minutes. So, we are looking for optimal value of tau c given theta b and theta naught. So, how do we go about it again take a derivative with respect to tau c. So, you get
minus theta b tau c theta naught. This goes to the power of minus half into the derivative of the terms containing tau c that is the first term is 0, then you have uh, a minus theta naught, then again you have plus 0 plus plus because this becomes uh, minus. So, you have plus theta b by tau c square theta naught. Okay. derivative with 1 and goes to 0. So, you get this expression. Now, this goes to the denominator because you have multiplying the, I mean you have a power minus half. So, what you need to look at is only this part of the expression because for this to be for f by m dot a not to be maxima this should go to 0. This can only go to 0 if the numerator goes to 0. Okay. So, this is the numerator in this so, for maxima, theta naught must be equal to 0. which means that tau c must be equal to okay fine sorry uh, yeah so you get this condition so we'll stop here and continue in the next class thank you